theorem. If f is a differentiable function, Uh, of x and y, so of two variables, two real variables, then f has a directional derivative in the direction of any unit vector u which I'm going to denote by a, b as its components, and and this is the part that I'm going to prove. I'm actually not going to prove that it has a directional derivative. I'm going to just prove that if it does, then the directional derivative of u, of f, okay, is equal to f sub x at x, y times a plus f sub y at x, y times b. Okay, so to prove this, that is to prove that this right here is the form of the directional derivative, uh, recall that the, the definition that I gave you in class for the directional derivative was that this is the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus a h y plus b h minus f x y all divided by h. Again, assuming that a and b are components of the unit vector. Okay, So prove that this can be found directly by doing this. So what I'm going to do to prove this technique is to define a new function, which I'm going to call g, and I'm going to have it depend on h. Okay, And it's going to be for a fixed point. Let's say x, just to emphasize the fact that it's fixed, I'm going to call x uh, x naught plus a h. So a is also fixed in this context. Y naught plus b h. So in this given form, notice how since x naught and y naught are fixed values, a and b are components of a known vector u, this function depends on only one variable. So what I want to do is I want to take the derivative of the function g and in fact I want to evaluate it at h equals 0. Okay, By definition this would be the limit because it's the derivative with respect to this I'm going to take the derivative as h goes to 0 of g of h minus g at 0 right? technically this is 0 plus my h This is 0, all divided by h. But by definition, g of h here is, in fact, f at x naught plus a h, comma, y naught plus a h. Right? Just replacing g of h here with what I defined it to be up here. Minus, and now if I plug in 0 in for h, I get f at x naught y naught all divided by h, which is the definition of the directional derivative of f in the direction of u at the point x naught y naught. But what I also am going to do is I'm going to come back up here to this form of it, and I'm going to take the derivative using the chain rule. Consider the same derivative, not using the definition as I did here, but instead using the chain rule that we learned last time. The chain rule for... Uh, multivariable functions. In other words, I'm going to let g be this function f of x and then x each and y each uh, depend on h. This implies that the derivative of g with respect to h 
would be the partial of f with respect to x times dx dh plus the partial of f with respect to y dy dh. The partial of f with respect to x I'm just going to write as s of x. Now what point is it evaluated at? Well, it's evaluated at x comma y, so I'll, I'll just write it in here as this. Now the derivative of x with respect to h is the derivative of this. x naught's a constant, a is a constant, so you get just a. The derivative of x naught plus a h with respect to h is a plus f sub y at x comma y times b. But if I substitute back in what x and y actually are, I get f sub x at x naught plus a h comma y naught plus a h sorry b h times a plus f sub y at x naught plus a h comma y naught plus b h times b and that together would imply that g prime at zero is in fact f sub x, plugging in 0 for h here, x naught y naught times a plus f sub y, the partial of f with respect to y, x naught plus a times 0 is going to be just 0, so I've got to get x naught, and then y naught times b. g prime is this, g prime is also this, therefore the directional derivative of f at the point x naught y naught is the same thing as f sub x at x naught y naught times a plus f sub y x naught y naught times b. So what we were trying to prove, done.